Hi, my name is Robin Moffat. I'm a developer advocate at Confluent. And today I want to show you what you can do with KSQL DB when it comes to building stateful aggregations on data that you've got in Apache Kafka. So in KSQL DB, we've declared a stream on top of a topic called orders enriched. So if I say show streams, we can have a quick look at that. And we've got orders enriched here, and it sits on top of a topic of the same name. So we could, that topic could be coming from anywhere. We could be ingesting it from a database or an application using the producer API to write that topic. Or actually in this case here, we've got a source topic and we've enriched it using KSQL DB already to denormalize the data and add in some extra stuff. But we've got this stream here. And if we select from that stream, so select start from there, emit changes, you can see it's got data within it about orders that have been placed. If we pause that, you can see you've got an order number, you've got uh, the time it was placed, what they bought, uh, the make of it, the color, and bits of stuff like that. And we've also got a column here, like how many did they order and how much did it cost? What was the total order value? Within KSQL DB, we can build stateful aggregations. So we can start to work out like what was the total number of units bought or broken down by a particular manufacturer, what's the total value of all the orders placed. So we're going to do this using SQL. It's called KSQL DB, the, uh, the clue is in the name. And we can do things like this. We can say select the make and then count the number of orders uh, broken down by make of different items. What's the total order value from this particular stream here? We'll group it by make. And we're just to start off with going to emit changes. So as that aggregate changes, emit that state change and just shows five, just shows the kind of thing that we can do. So here we see the results of that SQL statement. We've got the, the make here, how many orders, and then the total order value. Now, these are just the first five rows that are brought back. If I get rid of that limit clause, we'll see that a select in KSQL DB is what's called a continuous query. So it goes back and it processes all of the existing data. And then as new data arrives, that aggregate gets updated because new, the uh, events have changed. So uh, the number of items sold per manufacturer is changing if new things have been ordered. So that aggregate gets re-emitted. That's what that emit changes bit is saying. It's saying if that aggregate changes, well, emit it right out to the screen here. So now take that idea of writing out to the screen when it changes. And now we're going to say, well, actually, when it changes, just store that internally. So we're going to do this. We're going to say create a table. So we saw previously how you can create a table in KSQL DB to store state based on a Kafka topic. And in that case, we used it for doing uh, item reference lookups. So taking a stream of events and doing lookups against some reference information, that reference information we defined as a table because it was state for a given key. When we work with aggregates in KSQL DB, that's also state and that's also therefore a table because you've got a value, like the different aggregate values, the sum and the count, for a given key. And the key is the group by clause that we've got. So here we're going to say create a table, make aggregate as um, the make, which is the, the make of the item, the count, how many orders did we place, and the sum from orders enriched, group by make. Okay, I've left off the emit changes. That's implicit because I'm doing a create table as select. So it's created the table and a query underneath it. Let me say show tables. We've got a table here called make ag, and we can describe it. Describe that, and it says the make is the primary key, because that was that group by clause. And then we've got the order count, and we've got the total order value. I can select from that. I can say select star from make ag, and like that. And we're gonna do emit changes. So again, we're saying as that aggregate changes state, then re-emit it out to the screen. So we can see broken down by manufacturer, what that's uh, the number of orders that have been placed and the total order value. So this is what's called a push query. We've run the query, our select star, emit changes, and it's pushing any changes to us. So it's called a push query. And this is really useful if our application wants to subscribe to as the state changes, tell me about that. But also useful is the fact that when we did that create table, KSQL DB actually built a stateful aggregate internally with a materialized cache of that state. So it stores and maintains that internally. It's backed by a Kafka topic. And so we can use that Kafka topic to like push downstream if you want to take those aggregates and push them out to a database or something else. 
but that aggregate is also held internally within case equal db, which means we can do this. We can say, okay, here's this particular manufacturer. We've got like the Dickinson group and we can run another query. We're going to say select star from make ag, where make equals this, and we get rid of image changes. And this is what's called a pull query. We're going to case equal db and we're saying, what is the current state for this key? It says the current state is this. Currently, there have been 530 orders and this is the total order value. That's called a pull query because we're going against the state store within case equal db. Has that changed? I don't know. I'll rerun it. It's almost like working with a relational database. We've got static lumps of data and has something changed? Well, I'll rerun that query and we rerun it. And it turns out there's been another order placed in the meantime. If we do a push query, or if our application wants to know whenever we get more orders coming in and that aggregate changes, we would say, well, let's do emit changes. We want to subscribe to that stream of changes. So now it says, well, here is the current state, 531 orders. And if I keep talking long enough, at some point, a new order will arrive for Dickinson Group, which will cause the aggregate to increase, which will mean it will get emitted here onto the screen. So I've talked long enough and an order hasn't arrived, so just take my word for it. That is how it works. Otherwise, we'll all have to sit here till the cows come home. So that's one type of aggregate that we can build within case equal DB. We simply group by a particular field and calculate the aggregate over all of the data within Kafka and update the aggregate as new data arrives. We can also do windowed aggregates. And these are probably more relevant to a lot of the data we work with because data in Kafka is unbounded. So by definition, it kind of like you don't know when it ends because it's unbounded. That's what unbounded means. Whereas a lot of the time, if we're building aggregates, we'll want to know things like for a given uh, manufacturer, how many orders have been placed in the last week, in the last hour, the last day. You want to break it down by a particular time period. You don't want to know like since time immemorial began, how many orders have been placed. That's maybe useful, but much more relevant to business questions is usually in this particular time window, how many orders have been placed. So we can do what are called tumbling windows. We could do hopping windows. We could do session windows. And each of those have got different semantics around it to do with what that window needs to look like. So here's an example of doing a tumbling window. So here we're going to say, I would like to know, broken down by manufacturer, how many orders have been placed, broken down by hour. So then it's going to take, the, the key is going to be our make, and the key is also going to include this window. So the window um, is going to be of that uh, particular hour segment. Windows always start from the Unix epoch. So kind of like midnight, midnight to 0059.59, and then one o'clock onto 159.59. So those windows uh, tumble along like that. It's not based on like when the first event is received and then like hourly offsets from that. It's always based off of midnight. We're also doing something else here. We're tidying up our data types. We're saying the, uh, the order value, we're casting it to a decimal. So it gets something more uh, sensible in that field. So we go and create that table. And now we can go and query it. We can use a pull query. So we can say, let's have a look at the make, the order count, the total order value for this particular manufacturer. And now we're going to cast the window start and end. And these are special system columns that are just present in a windowed aggregation. And because it's a timestamp, it's a big int, it's a number of milliseconds since the Unix epoch, we're going to convert that timestamp to a string. So take the timestamp, the start of the window, the end of the window here, and convert it to a string that's easier to read. So we run that, and now this is a pull query. You can see down here it says query terminated because it's gone to the state store, it's pulled back the rows that match, and then it writes them out to the screen. Has anything changed in the data? I don't know. I'll have to go and rerun it. The alternative is a push query. We stick emit changes on the end, and then any changes to the query, uh, to the result set, get pushed back to here. So here we can see we've got our window here. It started at nine o'clock through to 10 o'clock. That was the first window in which there was some data. So there were 42 orders then, total order value of this, and then from 10 till 11, 11 till 12, and so on. So this one here is our current time window. So between two o'clock in the afternoon and three o'clock, uh, you can see the, the system time down here is uh, 10 past uh, two in the afternoon. If I rerun that query, so you can see there were 22 orders in that time. I've been chatting away in that time, two more orders have been placed. And so that window aggregate value has gone up. If we had any late orders come in with a timestamp set of like a previous window, 
then the appropriate window would also update to show that. So KSQL DB handles late arriving uh, data by simply updating that appropriate aggregate. Now what I've been showing you with these pull queries and push queries is from the command line, which is kind of useful, but much more useful is being able to say, well, I can now build an application and that application can use the state store in KSQL DB to find out the state based on a stream of events. So you've got a stream of events in a Kafka topic from somewhere, anywhere, wherever. That stream of events in a Kafka topic we can build into a materialized view, materialized cache. And now our application can externally access that cache, that view on that data. And so we can use a REST API, we can use the Java clients. There are also some community projects around like Python and Go and so on to also harness that REST API for getting the data out. The last thing that we can do with aggregates in KSQL DB is we can use the having clause to make set condition alerts based on when a threshold is reached and populate a new Kafka topic based on that. Let me show you what I mean. So here we've got another query that we're going to run. It's kind of similar to the ones before. We're saying we've got a windowed aggregation based on an hourly tumbling window. We're grouping it by make. We want to know how many orders have been placed, the total order value. But instead of simply taking that and pushing that into a new table, which we can then query as a state star, we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to say, I would like to set up a Kafka topic which will receive a message when this threshold is breached. So rather than calculating the aggregates and storing all the aggregates for all makes, uh, kind of like whatever they've sold, we say, I would like to store the aggregate only for a given manufacturer if they sell more than, in this case, 10,000 uh, worth of order value. OK, so we can run that and look at the values. So you can see here you've got the different manufacturers and the different time windows where they sold more than 10,000 worth of orders. So let me pause that there and you can see the windows scrolling by. So many of them do go over 10,000. So they come into this output here. So you've got 18,000, 11,000 and so on. And we're going to take that and we're going to push it into a new Kafka topic. We're going to say create table, uh, make over uh, 10,000 per hour as. So that's now going to populate a Kafka topic. And we're going to say create table that and we'll say uh, Kafka topic equals um, threshold breached. So that creates a table and tables are backed by Kafka topics. So if we say show tables, here's our table here, make over that. The Kafka topic is called this, threshold breach. And if we say print that Kafka topic there, you'll see on that particular topic, any aggregates which match that threshold. So that's aggregates in KSQL DB. You can use them to build pull queries, so you can query the state externally from KSQL DB against this materialized view, this materialized cache that you built up from your external application. You can also use it for building aggregates that you're going to push down to an analytics platform, so pre-calculating those aggregates. And you can also use the having clause to set conditional uh, thresholds for when you're then going to push that aggregate onwards, perhaps for kind of like some kind of alerting. So if you get more than a certain number of errors in a given time window, then put a message onto a topic and that, that uh, message on the topic can be used to trigger an alert. Hopefully this has been useful. Make sure you leave some comments, the thumbs up or thumbs down if you want to in the comments section. Uh, if you didn't like it, leave a comment in the comments section. Let me know what I could do better. If you did like it, leave a comment. Let me know you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for lots more videos all about KSQL DB, Confluent Cloud, Confluent Platform and Apache Kafka.